A very good morning to one and all. In the previous sessions, we have seen what are the various operating system services and what are the various operating system operations. So moving forward in today's session, we'll be seeing how an operating system can be designed and what are the various ways in which this designing can be done. So the topic we'll be dealing today is about operating system structures. So now what is an operating system structure? Operating system structure refers to what? How we go for designing our operating system. And why you want this uh, designing of the operating system to be done? As we all know, it is to manage your hardware and software resources. And you want the services to be provided to the user. And you want a secure and efficient operation of a computer system to be done. So now, let us move on to see what are the different types of operating system structures we have. We have uh, five different types of operating structures, namely simple structure, layered structure, microkernel, modular and hybrid structure. Now we'll see each one of them in detail, their advantages as well as the disadvantages. Now, coming to the simple structure. So now, when you go for the simple structure, we have all we already know what is an application program, what are your system programs, and you have your device drivers where they will enable our input output devices to function properly. And you have your BIOS, which stands for basic input output system device drivers. So now in your simple structure, these are the main important things of an operating system, right? So in a simple structure, all these things are being categorized and you have a link from one particular component to other component of this. And as you can see this, when you go for your simple structure, all the services of your operating systems can be implemented in each of these things. All the application programs at this particular stage, all your system programs and input output functionality in your device drivers and the basic input and output in your BIOS. Now, when you see this particular structure, so you have only one and all the operations are being implemented here. Now, coming to the advantage of this, it is very easy to develop because you need not worry. We are just segregating them and performing it. And the performance wise also, you have a good performance. But coming to the disadvantage of this particular simple structure, if any of your user program fails, it leads to the crash of your total system. And it has a limited functionality. Why? Because each of the layers is specific to that particular functionality. And abstraction or data hiding is not present. Why? Because all these programs are able to access directly interact with your hardware devices. So when you see the link here, application program can make a modif. I mean, while using these drivers, accidentally a modification can be done to the device driver. So it leads to the total system crash. So in simple structure, designing of your operating system is very easy. But we need to take care that if any of the program fails, or if an accidental modification is done by the user, it leads to this total system crash. Now, coming to the second structure, it is a layered structure. As the name implies, in layered structure, your total services of your operating system are being divided into layers. And we start with a layer one. We we'll start with a layer one, which takes care of your hardware part. Layer two will take care of your CPU scheduling. Layer three will take off memory management, how to allocate the memory and deallocate the memory. Layer four will deal with process management, creation of a process, deletion of a process, process scheduling. And this layer five will deal out with your input and buffer, how to store your data into a file or move the data out from the file. And finally, you have your user programs at the top level, which are used by the user as an application interface to interact with your hardware. So each of these layers, for this example, we have six layers. So each of the layer has its own functionality. So in this thing, so coming to the advantages of it, this is very modular indicating that each layer performs its own functionalities. And each layer functionalities are isolated, meaning that one will not interfere with the functionality of the other layers. 
and debugging is also easy debugging is also easy in the sense that now you are encountering an error at the layer 5 it is not compulsory for you to go till the layer 5 you can start debugging from lower level and once you finish uh, debugging at the layer 1 then you move on to layer 2 so by that time the error in the layer file might have been removed so debugging will always start from the lower layers and one more thing let me make it very clear the upper layers whatever you have here will be making use of the services of the lower layer and when coming to the disadvantages of your layered structure since each one is isolated that i'll do only this particular job in some cases there may be a degradation in the performance and since there is there is an implementation of the layers you need to even plan the construction of these or, or designing of this operating system in a careful manner so the functionality you now for example i go for layer 3 memory management so i need to see that all the memory management functions are being included in the layer 3 you cannot remove some functions and put it out in layer 5 so while designing the operating system a careful monitoring is very much required and coming to the third disadvantage a performance overhead is associated with communication between layers why because when they want any of the services to be provided they need to go for using either message passing or any of the communication techniques to pass the information from one to other why because i'm pressing once again all the upper layers will make use of the services provided by the lower layers now we'll move on to the third one where we call it as a micro kernel structure so when you go for seeing this as a micro kernel structure first we'll see what is a kernel so in the operating system you have a basic important component of operating system which we call it as a kernel so this particular kernel helps the operating system in performing all of its services we have seen a total of nine services starting with the cpu scheduling memory management device drivers and all those things so kernel component will help the operating system or in other way i call it as a kernel as a major component or a basic component of the operating system which helps in providing the services to the user so this is your kernel uh, coming to the micro kernel as the name implies micro micro means a small so what we do is we go for making this functionality so these are all the function services we have seen interprocess communication memory management cpu scheduling device drivers file systems and application programs so rather than asking the kernels to provide all the services we basically include only interprocess communication memory management and cpu scheduling in the kernel mode so it executes these services whereas application program file system and device drivers i'll be moved into your user mode and we have already seen your operating system can operate in two modes user mode as well as your kernel mode so you are reducing the burden on the kernel so since little functionality is done by your kernel you call it as a micro kernel but keep it in mind when you want when you are including some of your operations in your design mode you want your messages to be passed between your user mode and your kernel mode this is a basic functionality of your micro kernel now we'll see what are the advantages of your micro kernel structure now when you go for your micro kernel structure it allows portability means this structure can be implemented in any of your platforms you have a security here only because some services are being provided by your kernel and micro kernel is also isolated because there will not be any intervention between a user mode and the kernel mode and this micro kernels are very small micro small and the debugging can be done very easily that is nothing but successful tested and if any of your micro kernel component fails you will not leads to a system crash because it can continue with the remaining of all the operations and coming to the disadvantage of your micro kernel structure they should inter module communication meaning that there should be a communication between the user mode and always the kernel mode and it is very complex because you have to decide you are moving some of your functionalities into your user mode you have to see that 
there will not be you have to see that it is designated in a proper way the operations are being designated or divided properly for this construction and the next one is you there will be some amount of complexity involved because the user components has to perform some of the services of your operating system and the example of this microkernel structure is nothing but your mac os now we move on to the next operating system structure which we call it as a modular structure now when you go for say modular you might have seen in your object oriented programming where if my program is very large what do i do i divide it into modules similarly we have seen these all these structures now what we do is we divide the total functionalities of our operating systems into modules and each module will be working on only on those functionalities and all of these modules will not be loaded onto the system at the boot time depending on your operation dynamically or at the run time the modules can be implemented or loaded into your systems the basic example of this modular approach is nothing to your solaris operating system and the advantage of this modular structure is nothing but e each module has a designated operation to be done by this particular thing and it is more flexible indicating that you can add any of your modules whenever you require a module you can uh, you have a flexibility of adding more number of modules disadvantage of your modular structure is as it implies since you have designated the services into different modules you want a communication to take place between the modules so you go for incurring some amount of communication overhead and this modular structure can be more complex why more complex because i need to know what all the services or what all the system calls i need to include in this file systems so each module functionality has to be clearly defined before you go for creating up the modules coming to the last structure of your operating system which we call it as hybrid as we all know hybrid is nothing but combination of two or more now since we have seen these many operating system structures starting with simple micro kernel uh, modular so you may have an operating system designed in such a way that two of those features are being included so what we do in hybrid structure is we basically go for dividing our total design into three layers where the first layer will deal with your hardware abstraction your second layer will deal with process communication and scheduling and the third layer will deal with your file server input output management and error detection so the services are designated on each of these layers now when i go for the example of windows nt windows new technology or windows operating system our windows basically go for using combination of two structures one is your layered structure where each layer performs its own job and the other one is nothing but it also depends upon your modular structure in modular structure whenever you require a particular module to be implemented dynamically it can be loaded now coming to the advantage since it is hybrid depending on what all structures you are combining together obviously you have the advantages of those two things and managing is very easy because i'm designating each of these operations into a layered approach and the number of layers are fixed i'm telling you very clearly that layer 1 will take care of hardware abstraction layer 2 will take care of process scheduling and memory management and layer 3 will take care of these and security and protection are relatively improved by because one will not interfere with the functionality of the other and coming to the disadvantage of it it is very complex why because we have to include or keep it in mind the features of both the structures and include it so these are your basic hardware uh, basic operating system structures which will be using while designing our operating system and we move on to an example of an operating system of linux in the next class thank you all